Let's look at what Hebrews chapter 7 says. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, says, Therefore, he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, because Jesus at all times lives to make intercession for them. Intercession is a gift of Christ to the church. Intercession, in its simplest form, is standing in the gap for somebody else. You cannot, I'm going to write this down, you cannot intercede for yourself. You can pray for yourself, but you cannot intercede for yourself. Intercession is you standing in the gap on behalf of somebody else. It is prayer made on behalf of others. It literally means to fight for the powerless. To fight for the helpless. It is, in its simplest form, an expression of warfare. Okay? So, we have a prayer team that largely is comprised of intercessors. Which is why Karen will say, not everybody is on the prayer team. Because if you do not have a mantle of intercession on you, that's not the mode of operating that God is calling you into. It does not mean you can't come and agree with somebody and pray for them. There's a major difference between intercession and praying for somebody. The biggest difference is, the prayer of agreement is through compassion. I'm coming to you. I'm putting my faith with yours. I'm believing God with you. And I'm expecting great things. Intercession literally means your enemy has become mine. Your fight has become my fight. And I'm not letting go until you get victory in Jesus' name. It is aggressive. It will make the most mild and meek of Christian saints into a dynamic warrior. It literally is warring in the spirit. Warring in the spirit. This is what I've learned. If my wife is with me in the altar and we're laying hands on people, just boom, 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 boom. We're doing it together. We are in the, the prayer of agreement with one another. We are praying the prayer of faith over people. We are agreeing with one another. We are imparting through the Spirit to each other. The moment Miss Kimberly does that, if you watch me, this is what I do. I don't have the spirit of intercession. I will intercede for you. I will pray on your behalf. I will believe God for you. But I, God has not called me into intercession. God's called me into a lot of other stuff. And I'm secure enough not to try to put myself into something I'm not called into. You understand what I'm saying? She, from the day, heart, just basically from the day we started dating, and I started to see this happen to her different occasions. I was like, my goodness, she's got a spirit of intercession. Thank God one of us does. <laughs> and when and when when Kimberly decides, when God decides it's time for Kimberly to fight the devil, yeah. this is listen, mama didn't raise no idiot. Get him. Go after it, girl. Spirit of intercession often happens to people who have a deliverance calling on their life, a deliverance anointing, because it's a similar fight. And <laughs> uh, we, were, we were in this church, and uh, we were praying for this lady. Actually, other people were praying for this lady. I was in the altar. I, I, I have no idea what I was doing. I was in the altar just walking back and forth, and uh, this devil started to manifest in this woman and started to push her head forward and her face changed. And the look I've seen come on my wife's face, I've seen it. 
dozens of times. And it was, it, it, it kind of went like this. Oh no! Ah, ah! This is the beginning stage of what I've seen on my life is the spirit of intercession. Uh, there's an old 90s phrase. I probably shouldn't say it. I'm going to anyway. It's an old 90s phrase that used to go, homie, don't play that. <laughs> hey, some of y'all ain't always been saying know what I'm talking about. And that's the look my wife gets on her face. Uh-huh. We ain't playing that. And she got, man, she didn't get in this woman's face. She got in this devil's face. And, and she's like, you're not doing that. This is not happening. You're coming out in Jesus' name. And I went, we were at Pastor Mark's church. Pastor Mark sitting on the platform, on the steps. And I saw it coming. <laughs> And me and Pastor Mark were like ringside seats. And we're sitting there, we're watching. He leans over, Pastor Mark starts cracking jokes. And he goes, that devil's in trouble. And he goes, the same look on your wife's face is what I see on Sharon all the time. He goes, thank God these women don't look at us that way. They didn't have any clue he was having this conversation. I was like, I know that's right. <laughs> Long story short, that woman got free. Amen. 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 God may not call you into intercession, but he's called you into prayer. All of you. All of you. Maybe, uh, and man, you know, Sunday, for those of you that were playing hooky at camp. <laughs> so, Sunday, I'm just joking. Sunday was kind of weird. But wow, God did some life-changing things in some people. And I saw a man who was beautiful. Beautiful. He had an incredible moment with God. Corey, man, I'm excited about your walk. And then there was another young man over here. And uh, man, just as soon as I walked up to him, I mean, he just started trembling. And it was like, it's like God saying, do you think you got to give a traditional salvation altar? I'll save whoever I want to, whenever I want to do it, however I want to do it. And then God told, radically changed that guy's life, man. And then there was another young lady. God did the same thing with her. And man, I just thought, man, God, you're good. And so, if it's somebody like that that just had that moment with God, let's not think they lack the ability to pray. Maybe they just need to get around some seasoned saints. Or maybe they just need a little bit of time to open up the word and get enough word in them to be able to get into some of these other kind of But listen, if you can't do any of these eight, there's something you can do. Jesus said that there were two men at the altar. There was a religious man and a sinner. And the religious man beat his chest, thanking God he was not like this sinner. And the sinner beat his chest and said, Oh God, be merciful unto me. And Jesus said, Whom do you suppose the Father listened to? Anybody can pray. Don't compare. Don't be intimidated and don't get overwhelmed. Keep it honest. Keep it simple. Keep it sincere. And man, just open your mouth. <clears throat> Let me give you one last tip because it may help some people. If you don't know how to start, get a pen and paper and start writing out your prayers. And if you're like me, you'll start and you're like, 
That's dumb. No, that's not what I wanted to say. Don't be a perfectionist. God, help me. I don't know what to do. Pastor Tim said you would give your angels charge over me, so please send them. Amen. Amen. Did you know you don't have to pray for hours to be effective? Can I give you one? What time is it? Holy cow. I'm sorry. I didn't know I went that long. Are y'all okay? Yeah. Okay, one more hour and we'll get out of here. That's good. I'll give you one. an hour and a half. Right. Real quick. When I, when I was a kid, I used to think I needed to pray like my dad. And it got me to the point of not wanting to pray. And if you can't say anything else but it, please help. That is a prayer God will respond to and God will answer. Amen? Amen. Please stand. You'll stand. We'll leave.